Hello everyone. Hope you all doing well and welcome back to our Windows Server 2022 beginners video series on MSFT webcast. In this video, we will learn how to install and configure Windows Server 2022 as an iSCSI target server. iSCSI is an internet protocol based storage networking standard for linking data storage facilities. The iSCSI target server role service in Windows Server allows storage to be made available via the iSCSI protocol. It provides block level access to storage devices by carrying SCSI commands over a TCP IP network. iSCSI follows the server client model. The iSCSI target server makes storage available for the iSCSI initiator clients to use. You can connect your server to a shared network storage over a common TCP IP network without using fiber channel. To demonstrate the deployment process, I have created two virtual machines in Oracle VirtualBox. I have installed Windows Server 2022 on both virtual machines. We have single domain Active Directory Forest named msftwebcast.com. This is our root domain controller srt22-dc01. Let's go to our member server. Click on local server. This VM is our member server that has been joined to our Active Directory domain. To configure the iSCSI target server, we must install the iSCSI target server role in Windows Server. To do that, open Server Manager, click on Manage and select Add Roles and Features. Click Next on Before You Begin page. In Select Installation Type, ensure that Role Base or Feature Base installation is selected and then click Next. On the Selected Destination Server screen, we can choose the server or the virtual disk on which we want to install the desired role or feature. We want to install the iSCSI target services on SRT22-FS01. Hence, choose SRT22-FS01 from the list of servers within the server pool. After selecting the target server, click Next. Expand file and storage services, expand file and iSCSI services and then select iSCSI target server. If you are asked to add additional features, then click Add Features to do so. Make sure iSCSI Target Server role is selected. Click Next. On the Select Features page, just click Next because we don't require any extra features at the moment. On Confirm Installation Selection screen, you can see the summary of the roles and the list of features that you are going to install on this server. Review the details of roles and click on install. This will take a few seconds to install the selected role service. Wait for the installation to finish. Once installation completes, click on close. Open server manager and click on file and storage services. We can see the iSCSI target server that has been installed. To share storage, the first thing to create is an iSCSI virtual disk. Click on iSCSI. You will see, to create an iSCSI virtual disk, start the new iSCSI virtual disk wizard. Click on this link. A wizard pops up. Here, select the server and select the volume to store the virtual disk. Select type a custom path and click on browse. On volume D, create a new folder named iSCSI VHDs and click on select the folder. Check the custom path and click next. On this screen, you can provide the desired name of the virtual disk. Let me type name vdisk1. Let's add description iSCSI virtual disk1. After entering the name and description for the virtual disk, click next. Specify the size for the virtual disk. Let's set the virtual disk size to 20 GB for this example. Next, we have to select the type of virtual disk. Here, we have total three options to choose from. When we choose the fixed size, the wizard creates the disk that has the size specified in the size box. This disk type is useful when you want to run the application that involves high disk activity. When you add or remove the data from the disk, the size of the disk does not change. When we choose dynamically expanding disk type, 
the wizard creates the disk with a small size later the size of the disk increases based on the volume of the data that has been added if you have a scenario when you want to create multiple child virtual disk in on one parent disk then select the last option the changes should be made in child disk and those changes can be revoked this setup can be configured using the differencing disk type choose the disk type according to your requirements and scenario here i select dynamically expanding disk type because it's just for the demonstration and testing purpose and the final performance is not important in this case let's go with the default selection on the assign iscsi target screen we can provide the desired name of the iscsi target The iSCSI target name is used by the iSCSI initiators to identify the specific target. If you have created an iSCSI target earlier, you can choose it from the existing iSCSI target. Since we have not created any target yet, we will select new iSCSI target and click on next. On the specified target name page, type the name for the new target. Type name msft-tgt01. Under description type msft iscsi target 1 now click next to continue on the specify access server screen we can specify the list of iscsi initiators that can access this virtual disk by default the iscsi initiator cannot connect to the target server we must specify the iscsi initiator's information click on add to specify the iscsi initiator that should have access to this iscsi virtual disk later we have three options to identify iscsi initiator choose enter a value for selected type option for the initiator id i'll select dns name and browse to the server in active directory type srt22 hyphen dc01 click on check names and click on okay We can see the full DNS name of our domain controller is selected. Now click okay to add that. We can confirm that we have added one iscsi initiator that will access this iscsi virtual disk. We have added DNS name of our iscsi initiator. Click next to continue. We can enable chap authentication to authenticate initiator connection. Enable reverse chap to allow the initiator to authenticate the iscsi target in this example we will enable chap authentication tap username and password details after entering username and password details click next on confirm selection screen review all the settings and click on create to create an iscsi virtual disk on the view results screen you can see that disk has been created successfully you can now close this window Once the disk has been created, we can see the list of iSCSI virtual disk in our server manager. Check the status of the virtual disk. It is not connected at the moment. With the iSCSI target configured, let's proceed to the next step of configuring iSCSI initiator on Windows Server 2022 domain controller. Let's go to our domain controller VM. Microsoft provides an iSCSI initiator tool that allows connecting a windows computer to an external iscsi based storage open server manager click on tools and select iscsi initiator to open the iscsi initiator properties dialog box if you are opening the first time you will receive a pop up box a message box opens that says microsoft iscsi service is not running on this server click yes In order to start the Microsoft iSCSI service and set the startup mode to automatic start. Click on yes to do that. You can also manually use services.msc console to modify the automatic startup level of this Microsoft iSCSI service. Enter the IP address or DNS name of the iSCSI target server in the target field. Type srt22-fs01.msftwebcast.com and click on quick connect the iscsi target should be discovered with inactive status under progress report we can see it is unable to log in to the target this is due to chap authentication we need to complete the authentication to connect iscsi target successfully click on done 
Click on Discover Target and click on Connect. Click Advanced to see Advanced Settings. Enable Chap Logon. Type username and password that we set in the target earlier. Under Name, specify the Chap username, which is MSFT Webcast in our case. Under Target Secret, specify the Chap password. After entering the username and password details, click on OK. Again, click OK. Now the status will show as connected. That means a iSCSI initiator is successfully connected with the iSCSI target server. In order to use the iSCSI virtual disk, first we have to initialize it. Let's open disk management to do so. Click on OK. Right click on Start menu and select Disk Management. Right click on the new disk and select Online. Right click on the new disk again and select Initialize. Select the GPT partition style and click OK. We have an allocated space of around 20 GB. Let's create a new simple volume on this unallocated space. Right click on the unallocated space of the new disk and then proceed to the end to create a new simple volume. The new volume with the draw letter E has been created successfully. Once the volume has been created, you can access it from the Windows Explorer. Let's open Windows Explorer. And as we can see that the volume E has been created successfully. Just like any normal volume, we can create files and folders to store our data on this volume. We can view the list of sessions connected to the iSCSI virtual disk using the server manager. Go back to SRT22-FS01 member server. Refresh the server manager dashboard. In iSCSI target section, now we can see that the iSCSI target is connected. Under iSCSI targets, right click on MSFT TGT01 and select properties. Go to connections tab. We can see the IQN of the iSCSI initiator and session count by each IQN. In our case, this is the initiator IQN and session count is 1. Let's click OK. Uh, let me show the virtual hard disk as well. Uh, let's open File Explorer. Go to D drive. Access iSCSI VHDs folder uh, which we have created to store the VHD files. Here we can see the VHD file which is being used by the iSCSI target server. That's all for this video on how to install and configure Windows Server 2022 as an iSCSI target server. I hope you found this video helpful. If you have any questions and suggestions regarding this video, please let me know in the comments section. Thank you all for watching this video. Have a nice day.